Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Watching Brief for the month of November 2019. I am joined, as ever, by my co-host, Mr Andy Brockman. Uh, good afternoon, Mr Brockman. Good afternoon, Mark. Hi. Good afternoon. And uh, you'll notice that this month I dispensed with some of the pleasantries where normally I'd throw an epithet in Andy's direction, like the, you know, the, uh, the bejumpered Mr Brockman, this kind of thing. Because actually we're, we're, throwing, we're throwing out a couple of things. Actually, it may well be a cardigan looking at it. Um, we're throwing out a couple of things actually this month uh, in the shape of the agenda because uh, this month we wanted to make space to focus on two key topics that really warrant uh, serious conversation and discussion. Uh, normally we would construct our agenda over the course of a month, uh, but this month instead of, for example, having a Muppet of the Month and four news stories and a media pick, uh, we want instead to talk about uh, the uh, general election. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it, 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 oh joy um, <laughs> um, yes. uh, on the 12th of December we're going to be having an election in the UK which which will have an effect on the archaeological uh, sector and so we want to, uh, to take a look at the manifestos and some other um, key documents and links uh, in, you know, in the spirit of having an informed electorate I think these sort of conversations are important especially for the sector that we're in so, so that's going to be happening spoiler alert there's not a lot to you don't need to please, <laughs> um, it's not a priority shall we say for some parties um, and secondly we want to, uh, to 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 seriously talk about uh, a situation that, that arose in November which is a part of a broader um, conversation that's been happening in, in I think in the sciences but also in archaeology over the past couple of years and in society, actually, I think. Uh, well, well, yes, and, yeah, and in society, but in particular in archaeology, it's been it's been um, gaining um, gaining momentum, and that is broadly speaking linked with the Me Too movement. Uh, we've seen on both sides of the pond recently institutions and members of institutions having to confront some ugly truths, and this was really given sharp focus here in the UK at a particular uh, award ceremony. So, you know, with full knowledge that that actually later this month, in fact, i.e. in December, you're going to be having the Christmas special and there'll be party games and the office will be decorated and we'll have some fun. We figured that November's watching brief uh, should be set aside as a slightly different beast than uh, than normal. Um, so I suppose all that remains is to, is to begin. And, and I, th I think we should begin with that second um that second element uh, i.e with the story um of uh, danielle bradford and the marsh archaeology archaeology awards uh, can you uh, set up the scenario for us mr brockman right um this relates to an incident that occurred at the marsh archaeology awards on the 22nd of november mm. um now for those people that aren't familiar with them the marsh awards are one of the um headline moments in the archaeological year in Britain. Mm -hmm. They uh, are there to celebrate the best in new research books, project, archaeological projects. Um, it's, it's a party. It's meant to show all that's good about what archaeologists do in, in, in Britain. Mm. Uh, it is hosted by the Council for British Archaeology and this year, as well as celebrating the winners of the various categories, uh, the big story was meant to be that Mike Hayworth, Dr. Mike Hayworth, who is the current director of the Council of British Archaeology, is standing down after mm -hmm. 10 years. Um, Mike has seen the CBA through some very difficult times. It lost most of its funding with the, under the coalition government after 2010. Mm -hmm. um, there was there have been major changes in the planning system. And um, Mike has seen the organisation through that and pivoting towards a more... Uh, locally based and interventionist role in things like uh, advocating for historic buildings and archaeology in the planning process and so on. So yeah. that should have been the big story. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because of what happened when Daniel Bradford was announced as a uh, uh, for uh, for her uh, early career research which is actually in sexual misconduct in field work. Now, Daniel Bradford is a bioanthropology graduate from Cambridge. Mm -hmm. um, she's been researching this for a while now, and 
um, the work was being recognised by this flagship event. Now, rather than try and describe what happened, I'm going to re just read you her Twitter thread. And I'm, uh, I should add, I'm doing this with permission. Um, I contacted Danny about the pipeline because I'm doing a background uh, on this particular issue. And, um, and I, I felt it was important not to just start um, you know, uh, quoting verbatim without... Uh, checking back first so mm -hmm. this is so uh, I'm, I'm quoting this with permission okay what she wrote and this was immediately after the event tonight i got off my flight from seattle to london and went straight to an archaeology awards ceremony i was excited i've never been nominated for a research award before but the evening ended in lots of tears and highlighted to me how far the discipline has to come mm. as i was being introduced they said quote she's been researching sexual harassment in archaeology end quote to which a large group of older men laughed fully laughed to the point the presenter had to say it isn't funny now i understand that the person the mc the presenter was actually mike Hayworth himself right um danny continued i managed to go up to get my certificate but as soon as i sat back down i burst into tears in front of a hall full of people it was humiliating this is exactly the kind of toxic culture in archaeology that drives our early career researchers and ironically fosters sexual harassment even if you take out the subject matter imagine being 21, just out of undergrad, shortlisted for your first research reward, and a group of people decide it's acceptable to publicly laugh at that research. Mm. I know that my research has not always been taken seriously. I know this. What I was surprised at was the fact that these people were so effing open about it. They laughed in front of a room of their colleagues at a young woman. Afterwards, mm. when I couldn't go up for the pictures because I was still crying, a number of older women came up to me and they all said similar things. Quote, I've been in this field for X years, it's about time someone talked talked about this. Thank you. Mm. So I guess it was brought home both why this research can be so damn hard at times and why it's worth it. And, and then she added, also, just to be clear, the organisation that hosted the awards, which is CBA, obviously, were amazingly kind and supportive, both of me personally and of my research. They were also angry at the reaction. I was very lucky in that respect. Mm. I suppose, first of all, it... it it's worthwhile just saying that, that it's deeply regrettable that anyone who's being honoured at an award ceremony is laughed at. You know, it, 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 that, 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 that's just a given, no matter, it, no matter what you think of their research. It's just sheer bad manners apart from anything else. Yes. It's unbelievable. It's, in, it's, it's, it's bad manners, it's, it's, it's unexpected behaviour. Yeah. Uh, and in that sense, I think... It's not normal behaviour, actually. No, and I, th I think... At, at that kind of event, is it? You no, know? no, and I, I, th I think by virtue of uh, of such an unexpected response, no one expects to be laughed at when they're about to be given an award. Uh, her reaction initially is utterly understandable. Uh, never mind the extra layer of who was laughing and what they were laughing yeah. at in terms of the content of the research. Right. Um, the second thing that comes to mind is the fact that this, this to a certain extent, isn't 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 new i mean I, I know i said at the beginning of this watching brief that, that this is in the context of a, a movement in archaeology over the past couple of years but i remember uh was it back in 2015 maybe four years ago um having a conversation with liv and reese uh on the youtube channel about uh a, a, a survey that had been done in, in anthropology and actually i've got the i've got the link here i'll put it below for people to to link to um, where we were discussing a headline, sexual harassment is common in scientific fieldwork. This is broader scientific fieldwork, but the, but the um, anthropologists who did the research, essentially applying anthropological skills to the field, uh, put out a survey. Uh, the initial idea was in 2011, and by 2013 they had results that were coming back that, quote, reported a high incidence of sexual harassment in biological anthropology. Uh, quote, it became really clear that this wasn't just an issue that occurred in the past and that had been taken care of. And so, so uh, again, coming back to this idea of being laughed at <laughs> for your research, yeah. it's not even as though she just pulled this out of thin air. That she's, she's building on a body of research. Of course, she'll be aware of this, you know, in terms of her rela related reading and, and um, the, the uh, literary background to her research. Uh, and it, I think it's a real shame to, to also... Um, see someone saying that they don't they know that their research isn't being taken seriously yeah. and, and i think i think initially just, just as an archaeological colleague i respond to that thinking that this that, that it's just deeply inappropriate well perhaps it's worth 
uh, quoting some of the responses mm. to people uh, to what happened from people who were actually uh, either at the Marshall Wards or who uh, are, know this particular mm. area and have been working with it um, in in, the, in an archaeological context. Um, Richard Osgood, who is the head of the um, uh, Cultural uh, Heritage Archaeology Unit at the Defence Infrastructure Organisation, mm -hmm. um, said, what have we become? At an award ceremony tonight where we celebrated phenomenal achievements of people in archaeology, including wonderful uh, young archaeology club CBA members, all ruined by some people laughing at the, uh, laughing at the brave research on the appalling behaviour towards women by some in archaeology. Horrific. Mm -hmm. um, Wessex Archaeology um, thank you to Dan Bradford for sharing your incredibly brave and important research we too were surprised and disappointed and we condemn this behaviour from those who clearly have had so much to learn from your work um, Joe Flatman who um, is uh, involved with uh, equality at, at CIFA, the uh, Chartered Institute for Archaeology. Um, for the avoidance of doubt, Danny Bradford has already contributed more to archaeology than some people manage in their lifetimes. We need to get many more people like her in heritage as we can get. We all need to actively engage in reforming our sector culture. And Mike Hayworth himself, uh, who'd been chairing the, uh, emceeing the event, uh, wrote, uh, I was particularly pleased that Archaeology UK, which is the CBA, uh, was able to recognise the important work of Danny Bradford in archaeology and related fields through the Marsh Archaeology Awards today. The appalling reaction of a few people in the audience to her deserved citation was a disgrace. Yeah. Now, um, well, I, I, there, so there are two th further thoughts. One of them is much more serious, and I'll come back to that to that one in a second. Mm -hmm. The first one is just uh, is one that actually some people commented on, for example, on the RKC Facebook page when I shared. Uh, the BBC News article linked with this, um, and that is, um, do we know who these people were? And I'm not, I'm not asking that in order to 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 name them here, <laughs> but rather that so rather not. no, rather to say, or, or that is to say, I'm not interested in directing you know bile in their direction, but rather to say, um, presumably, uh, Mike and others will have noticed which table this was and would have had a sense of who this was. Is there, is there any idea of who it was that was actually laughing at right. uh, this, uh, this person? Okay. Um, now, I'm speaking here really as a, uh, a journalist mm -hmm. and uh, someone who observes these, um, these issues and writes about them and researches them and um, without giving too much away, I can say that this does not come as a surprise to me. No. Um, and but what I, what I would say is what is surprising about this is that in the nearly three weeks since this happened, mm -hmm. no names have surfaced. No. No mobile phone video has surfaced. Mm -hmm. No audio has surfaced. Um, now it may be that uniquely for a modern award ceremony like that, nothing, nobody was shooting a mobile phone video. Well, or maybe, maybe uh, mobile phones were handed in at the door. I mean, it's, that's a possibility it's, uh, as well. It's certainly yeah. possible. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you know, there are huge sensitivities in a very small sector about people. You know, it has to be said that the, the people that go to something like the Mar the Marsh Awards are very much the great and the good of archaeology. It's invitees, it's award winners, their colleagues, guests um, from from the sector and so on. It's not something that your average member of the general public would go to. And, and hence, hence we're never invited. <laughs> I, 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 fall, I fall back on the Groucho Marx thing. I don't want to be a member of a club that would have me as a member. No, no. Um, <laughs> oh, actually, no, don't say that because now we'll never get, be able to accept an award if we're ever offered one. <laughs> In all, in, right, in, all, yeah, in, all yeah. seriousness, in all seriousness, um, the, I, I think there <laughs> is a sense that maybe, uh, again, I've got no evidence for this, it's just a hunch, mm -hmm. and I'm not certainly not aware of any deliberate attempt to hush this up at all, in fact, quite the opposite, People, and in fact, people aren't letting it be mm. hushed up, mm -hmm. um, and we'll come to that in a minute, but... Um, I think there is a sense of acute embarrassment that this has happened. Mm -hmm. And 
I would imagine that the lives of the people uh, and the internal lives of the people maybe who did this have not been that happy since the 22nd of November. No. Um, because it, it's like the old Greek myth of uh, Pandora's box. Mm. Uh, the lid was opened and some pretty unpleasant stuff came out so that people maybe have been trying to keep quiet for far too long. Now, I'd, I'd like to also just point, uh, to, to tie this up with um, something that happened the following day. Now, what happened at the Marsh Awards was bad enough. Mm-hmm. Um, but the following day, the Guardian published an article um, about a man called Hubert Cheshire. Hmm. Hubert Cheshire was a, a genealogist and a herald, uh, expert in coats of arms and so on, and is a proven abuser. Hmm. Um, however, the... When the Society of Antiquaries um, tried to take disciplinary action, because he was a fellow of the Society of Antiquaries, um, under their rules, the only people who could vote on whether to expel him or not were members in good standing, which is fair enough, mm -hmm. but who could physically attend an extraordinary general meeting on a working day afternoon. In, and as a result, um, there was a narrow vote to allow him to retain his membership. Right. Now, we are talking about the Society of Antiquaries here, which is, Brit uh, 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 you know, before the CBA even, it is Britain's leading expert body for archaeologists. It's, you, you know, you, you are invited to join. It's not a club that anybody can join. You are invited to join. The membership has to accept you as a person who has made a particular contribution to the sector. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you're not seen as uh, having uh, done that, uh, made a sufficient contribution, you won't be accepted into membership. You won't even be invited. Yeah. So for that kind of organisation, which has been in existence since the late 18th century and has very plush, um, uh, has a very plush building in Piccadilly uh, 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 um, next to Burlington House. Nice biscuits. Uh, no, very nice biscuits. Yeah. Very nice biscuits. Um, you know, portraits of kings and you know, Tudor portraits of kings and queens on the wall, on the wood panelled walls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's the it, it's it's the the archaeological club um, to appear to be dismissing the uh, proven abuse of one of its members. The, well, the, was, the crimes of one of its members. I have to be careful here because... Um, Potential crimes, alleged crimes. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Cheshire was, was, um, uh, uh, is uh, ill. Um, he is uh, um, said to have uh, dementia and the uh, he was subject to not a court case but what's called a finding of fact. Okay. Um, so we have to be a little bit careful on the, on the legal, legal niceties there. Um, basically, he did what he he did what he was accused of doing, but mm -hmm. there, there had, he's he's not serving a prison sentence or anything like that. Criminal actions. I mean, the, 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 yeah, there are words. It's, but, a, yeah. it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a criminal process, and, yeah. and and to a criminal standard, he has been found to have done what he was accused yes. of doing, which is abusing a young man. Um, to, to appear to dismiss that as a disciplinary offence, I think the membership. Uh, who actually voted, and again, it was a tiny proportion of the membership of the organisation, um, coming the day after the Marsh Awards, that becoming public the day after the Marsh Awards, uh, it's probably the worst 48 hours of British archaeology in my lifetime in terms of its look. Mm. <clears throat> and also a lot of people, for example, uh, for, on Twitter, obviously, uh, for example, uh, were saying that they have to tender with their resignation. Uh, I think uh, a couple, one person, I think, stepped down from the board, I believe. Um, it's It has been a mess. And uh, and this, this, this brings us to a, a very important question, and it's one that I'm not sure that we alone can answer. And with that in mind, I think at some point in the very near future, probably in the new year, we're going to be reaching out to some people to, to have a com broader conversation. I'll come, we'll come Indeed. back to that in a moment. Um, but the question is simply how how can we fruitfully fruitfully respond to this? Now, right. now, now, now uh, let, me, let me just let me just just okay. set that up. Okay. In so much as I am not and would never be someone who 
would sexually harass someone or take advantage of my position or my seniority or my age or whatever to yeah. to, 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 to to interfere with other people's lives in a way that they don't want. Um, but we, you and I, and I'm sure you're in the same boat as me, <laughs> we, you and I, are unfortunately tarnished by association in so much as we are... Uh, I am increasingly older. We are both uh, established archaeologists. Uh, we are men, and uh, we we look like a lot of the people who are accused of doing this. Let's put put it that way. Um, so, so to lots of people, seeing us two talk about this doesn't really seem to be necessarily the answer. But it has to be part of the answer. And so, so I suppose the question is, how can we initially begin to fruitfully tackle this? for ourselves and then obviously we'll bring other people in on this when we can so go ahead okay right okay first of all uh i've approached this discussion today as a reporter not as an archaeologist mm -hmm. okay so um i'm and what i'm doing is just reporting what went on and i think what i should now do is uh show how the organizations involved have responded okay um, because uh, first and foremost, these were issues of two established educational charities mm -hmm. um, who, to use the current jargon, um, are have innocently or not overseen a situation where they have not provided a, quote, safe space mm -hmm. for their members, and particularly their women members. Mm-hmm. So, um, very shortly after the, the incident at the Marsh Awards, um, the CBA issued a statement which basically confirmed um, what Danny Bradford wrote in her Twitter thread, um, and then went on to say that the CBA is shocked at the reaction to Danny's award and condemns anyone who treats these issues lightly and does not give researchers in this area the respect they fully deserve. We offer our sincere apologies to Danny and anyone who has suffered from sexual harassment in archaeology. We are committed to working in partnership with other organisations and individuals in our sector to change behaviour and to stamp out any form of discrimination and abuse in the discipline. We have not yet been able to identify the source of the laughter in the audience, which was made up of both CBA members and members of the public. However, the CBA is writing to everyone who was in attendance to make clear our condemnation of the completely inappropriate reaction and to ask those present who may have been part of the laughter to reflect on their own behaviour and to apologise to Danny and everyone else who was present at the event. They have brought the CBA and our entire discipline into disrepute. Mm -hmm. All attendees will be reminded of their duty to behave appropriately at CBA events in line with the CBA's code of conduct, which was agreed by trustees in early 2019. We will prominently display this code at all future CBA events and draw it to the attention of all attendees. And then she said, uh, then, then, then the um, statement, which is again signed by Mike Hayworth, said, the CBA stands with Danny. Her research shines a light on serious issues within archaeology that cannot be ignored and must be addressed openly with respect. We hope to publish the results of her, her research in our British Archaeology magazine in the new year, and we will work with Danny and others, including members of the Equality and Special Interest Group of the Chartered Institute of Archaeologists, to bring those important issues to the attention of our entire membership, as was our initial intention in giving the award to Danny. Mm. Archaeology matters. It should be accessible and safe for everybody. Okay. So that's fine as far as it goes. And in fact, um, subsequently Mike Hayworth has confirmed to me that it is within the power of the CBA to expel members who are found to have brought the organisation into disrepute. Right, okay. Um, the other organisation that was mentioned there was CIFA, the Chartered Institute for Archaeologists, mm -hmm. and they also issued a statement um, on the Monday uh, immediately after the event. Mm. Um, the Chartered Institute was shocked to hear about the behaviour of a few individuals in the audience at the CBA's Marsh Awards ceremony in response to the award presented to Danielle Bradford for her research into sexual misconduct in field work. The organisers have not yet been able to identify the individuals involved. If they are CIFA accredited, they are bound by our ethical code of conduct and there is a formal professional conduct process for the Institute to follow. If not, there's no formal route for the CIFA to act, but we would like to take this opportunity to call on archaeologists to work together to ensure a safe and respectful environment for all. We applaud Daniel Bradford for her work on sexual misconduct in field work and are committed to working with our sector partners to address the problems of bullying, harassment and discrimination as outlined, as outlined in our joint statement with 
fame and prospect this, again prospect being the trade union fame being an organization for archaeological employers um and um it added uh CFIS code of conduct st uh, statement and policy sets out high standards of ethical and responsible behavior required of professional archaeologists we will continue to use our endeavors to ensure that all archaeologists work in accordance with those principles but um people will have noticed it's a holding statement mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um it's a statement of intent and 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 probably issued in well no and probably will have been issued in in in, in good faith um but i think it has to be said that as they were nearly three weeks on and apart we're, we're now over the initial shock horror this has happened mm -hmm. but we're not aware that anything else has happened in terms of follow-up now that may be because there are you know uh disciplinary processes that are currently in process and therefore quite rightly be, uh, uh, are not being made public or it may be that uh, the momentum has gone out of it I think we'll we'll find that out in the next few weeks probably and then well I suppose then that comes back to an element of what I was asking in terms of what can we do and I guess one of the things that we can do is try and ensure that this doesn't simply chug and come to an end yeah, in terms of its momentum. That's not to say that that that, that one needs to 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 harp on to to an extreme, but to continue to highlight this as an issue is important. What's interesting though is that, is that when I um, uh, initially actually just shared the, the the BBC News article on the Facebook page, it started an interesting conversation. So first of all, some people were saying, goodness me, she looks very young. <laughs> and so uh, I have to say, when she was saying, when she said in her Twitter thread, uh, some older women came up to me, I was like, I wonder how old these older older women were. You know, she she does look, she is, well, it's, you know, it's, she's getting an award for early stage uh, research. So of course she's going to be quite young. Um, but that then led to some people, uh, I think the most constructive criticism, constructive criticism here, was mm -hmm. asking, quite openly and the conversation led to a conversation that was useful um or led to, to some thinking that was useful quite openly why uh why is this person doing this research in this way in this field i.e this the implication being that this should be sociology or it should be applied as a sociologist coming and looking at anthropology now bearing in mind that i've already linked back to some work uh, that was done four, four or five years ago, well, actually almost a decade ago in its inception. Uh, one of the, the, the answer to that question is quite simple. Anthropology and archaeology looks at human behavior and cultures, and the culture of our research is a legitimate topic of, of inquiry. Not to mention the fact as well that actually any good science has a sort of a, a reflective, reflexive uh, relationship to its practice. So. So that, that, that legitimate criticism, I think, can be dealt with quite, uh, quite neatly and appropriately. I don't think there's anything, I can understand why the question was being asked. And uh, I, I, I don't put any, um, I, don't, I don't impugn their motivations in asking their question. But it, it started some very unfortunate conversations um, with one or two people, but one person in particular who ended up having to be banned from the page who um, didn't allow any room for there to be le a legitimate space in which to say that, they, that these issues are real. Uh, they, they, they had a particular focus on, uh, for example, the idea, the notion that, um, uh, that in, in their words, quote, if you bump into someone these days, it's sexual harassment or rape, you know. Uh, the, uh, one of the quotes that came back from the same person was, in, in, a, in a university setting, two-thirds, they say one-third of all accusations turn out not to be true. Now, as I pointed out in this conversation, um, another way of saying that is to say that two-thirds of accusations are rape. <laughs> you know, um, it, 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 it was a strange conversation that happened. And the reason why I'm, I'm bringing this up, uh, because actually it culminated in, in a really weird set scenario where I, I got a phone call from someone. Uh, he, he apparently lived in North Carolina and left me a message. Um, it was really weird. He left me a message all about beta males not forming us the society that we lived in. He s spent money to tell me that. <laughs> Um, so this this was a very this was uh, you know I'm yeah. leaving I'm leaving room there to say this was a this was an odd 
an odd situation. But the reason why I bring it up is to say that that is actually precisely the moment when it is tempting to allow these conversations to, to drift away and to, fit, to fizzle out and to lose that momentum that, that arguably we should be keeping up. Uh, and, and I suppose, if it, I mean, what, what, what do you think? Right. Um, first of all, I would say that it is absolutely legitimate for anybody in archaeology to undertake research of that kind. And um, remembering that Danny Bradford is a trained bioanthropologist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it is absolutely legitimate to carry out that kind of research because it is part of the structure and methodology and culture of the heritage sector, of the archaeological sector, and which has to be understood. Mm. Secondly, um, we are dealing with very high level, very serious issues of discipline and potentially of breaches of the law. Mm. And if those aren't important to investigate, I don't know what is. Well, and also, I suppose, by extension, uh, issues where breaches of the law are being um, arbitrarily mitigated by institutions that really have no be have no business getting in the way of the legality of someone's uh, they say the judgment Ab of the legality of someone's actions right? Ab absolutely and, and this is where I, again I'd, I'd like to just quote you um, a little bit from the quite long statement that the Society of Antiquaries um, mm -hmm. released um, in response to the uh, article in the uh, Guardian Stroke Observer um, and it said that the society is committed to acting in a way which is consistent with both with its status as an educational charity operating for the public benefit and an institution which confers public recognition of the achievements of its fellows. Mm. In the council's view, as of the society's board of trustees, this means taking action to ensure the society is seen to act charitably with care and respect for the victims of abuse and to remove fellowship from people who do not live up to the society's rightly high standards. Mm -hmm. In June this year, the society wrote to the victim, who is now an adult, to inform him that the council had unanimously decided to put a resolution to its fellowship to remove Mr Cheshire as a fellow of the society. This is the removal process specified by the society's constitution, which requires the resolution to be passed by a majority of two-thirds of fellows present and voting. It is at, a, um, it is at, a, at present the only way which the society can remove a fellow. Unfortunately, this resolution was defeated. Now, my response to that is, then why the hell did you bring it? Uh, in so much as if, um, if there was a, a strong chance of it, of it being voted not down. Precisely. Hmm. Sort your procedure out first, and then bring the resolution. Um, you know, some. Hmm. You know, uh, it, as it, you know, they are now where they are, and in fact, they have said that the, uh, in a subsequent statement that the procedure is not fit for purpose and they're going to be consulting the membership and, and voting on on changes well, too and, and, late well, and, and, well, <laughs> well, well yes and, and just for, again just for clarity's sake there that this relates directly to what we were just talking about in so much as what we mm. have here is an institution going through a process uh where members quite rightly in almost any other situation get to have a a, a say in their membership and the, cons yeah, the cons absolutely. constituency of their membership but in this instance, someone who who is in a, a situation of proven um, wrongdoing, I'll step back from you know as you say, but unless you know, to a criminal level, have been shown to be uh, on the wrong side of the law, um, being saved by that process, uh, arguably because uh, because the membership doesn't understand the issues at play, or because simply the process isn't adequate to deal with with actually situations where opinion and legal statements of legal legal uh, assessment uh, assessments of someone uh, mm -hmm. can be contrary um, whereas re really it should be the case that actually this sort of this, someone in that situation there should be a way of saying this person has has by definition gone against what we want in our community and therefore they're not yeah. welcome in this society for example yeah hmm. Yeah. Now, again, uh, a couple of observations I'd make here. Mm -hmm. um, this, uh, the Me Too movement is so new and so important and so resonant, but you know, the inertia that comes with a creating an institution, particularly a long-lived institution like the Society of Antiquaries, mm -hmm 
just the the inertia that come, is built into the mechanisms just isn't capable of dealing with it yet. No. And I think no. what we're seeing is a case of uh, institutional catch up, and in some cases, institutional catch up pretty darn quickly after a car crash, yeah. after a PR car crash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you've got basically a, a 19th century process trying to deal with a 21st century issue of uh, sexual harassment and culture, uh, 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 an academic and, and, and uh, institutional culture. And it has just been proven in the most public way possible not fit for purpose. And, and again, to all credit to them, the, um, the membership of uh, very rapidly mobilised to, uh, to to force the leadership of the Society of Antiquaries to take what has happened on board and act proactively as soon as is practically possible within the rules of the society. Um, do you, do you just it's just been very ugly. Yeah, I mean, out of interest, uh, and I suppose we, you know, we, we, I think we've 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 addressed a lot of this issue. We should probably. Mm -hmm. Um, think about bringing this segment to a close now. Um, but we, we have a couple of extra, a couple of extra things that we don't want to mention. But um, yeah. uh, to have, just have interest, what would what would what would the response be to a member committing a crime such as uh, running someone down in the street, or being a convicted thief, for for example? Would they would there be a similar process? That's a very good question, and the short answer to that is I don't know. Um, it is certainly possible that that would be construed as, for example, bringing the society into disrepute mm -hmm. and would be subject to a disciplinary. Um, it might also be argued that as it wasn't uh, you know, to do with their uh, state, uh, you know, that their, their work as a historian, genealogist, uh, you know, archaeologist, that it's not relevant to their membership. Right. Um, yeah, for example... Um, you don't get kicked out of the House of Lords unless you've actually served a prison sentence, if I think if I remember correctly. Um, <laughs> but you can, for example, yeah. drive under the influence and, yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly, mm. exactly. You know, there, there are numerous cases, of, for example, um, the, uh, I think uh, of, uh, I say numerous cases, certainly cases I can recall of uh, transport ministers uh, being done for drink driving and retaining their post as MP, their, you know, their, their status as MPs, even if they've had to resign as a minister. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, this, this, it, this is a complex area, and you're also dealing with areas which, and again, and this is where I'd like to come. Just mention the Society of American Archaeology in particular, and this, a statement they released in the last few days. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just as, as as we wind this up, um, but, but but the organisations are constantly worried that people who they take disciplinary action against, which might be perceived as damaging their careers. Um, they are they are in fear of being litigated against in those in those circumstances. And so I suppose then uh, a, a, a reason why that my question about this idea of broader broader acts of criminality, for example, or uh, mm. th other things that might disbar you from being members of other, for example, you can be a lawyer, you know, <laughs> if you yeah. if you if you uh, if you uh, were driving under the influence. Um, mm. uh, this particularly pertains to membership of an organization and how the the conduct of that membership or that member rather infringes upon the ability of other members to be safely members of the organization that's 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 the issue here so this is why this mm -hmm. these sorts of acts of uh of for example uh, see you know uh, criminal misconduct in terms of sexual abuse or harassment uh, have a particular uh currency in terms of these sorts of institutions that's, I, I, I know I'm, I'm getting very specific here, but I'm just, just trying just to understand and also maybe help other people as well understand the difference between uh, why it is that that, that, as a, that an institution might not want to comment on, um, you know, me if I'd been drink driving and hit a lamppost compared to me if I had uh, gone around um, physically attacking people. For yeah. Example. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, in particular, other archaeologists. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so I'm laughing there just because of. Uh, 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 doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It, 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 there was a silly thing that happened last time I was with uh, with other archaeologists involving a foam bat. But never mind. <laughs> um, so uh, you, you you wanted to say that then uh, it was um, uh, a couple of days ago that the SAA issued uh, a statement that actually we've got. Uh, well, I've got a sciencemag.org article here. 
whose headline yeah. is Archaeology Society Votes to Let Board Ban Sexual Harassers from Meetings. Which is, strictly speaking, true, but the real story mm -hmm. is that, um, and this is relating back to the, that, that meeting in Albuquerque last um, late spring, where uh, David Yasna, uh, who'd been found guilty of harassment and banned from the University of Alaska in Anchorage, mm -hmm. registered and then attended mm -hmm. the meeting where some survivors of his abuse were also in attendance. Yeah. Huge row, quite understandably. People incredibly upset. People resigning membership. A, a mirror image, really, of what's been going on in 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 London with the Society of Antiquaries over the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and cut to the chase. A group of SAA members um, who called themselves the Awesome Small Working Group got together and uh, put forward a motion to change the rules that the organization works by um, now they base this change on a rule adopted by the American Anthropological Association so a, a very similar body mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the rule would have allowed the board of the Society of American Archaeology to ban uh, um, ban people who had been sanctioned for sexual harassment by a public court or by university disciplinary process. Mm. Automatic ban, no question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the board of the SAA put this forward to the membership to vote, but they also put an alternative motion of their own, which doesn't allow for an automatic ban, but merely gives the board the powers to ban people. Mm. Mm. And the members' motion was voted down narrowly. The board's motion, preferred motion, which was the one uh, for, a discretion, for discretionary bans, was passed. Right. Now, again, we can argue about why that happened. So, well, and so I, I suppose some are... Uh, um... I'm not that I'm looking to argue, but <laughs> but uh, but so for example, this this can lead to a headline that looks really good, like Archaeology Society votes to let board ban sexual harassers from meetings. It's very specific, but it looks great um, for them from that on, in terms of dealing with this issue. But on the other hand, it's also leaving that little loophole, a little area, a little space, a bit of wriggle room for uh, for people to to uh, to sneak through. Uh, potentially, it's not it's not conclusive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, and so, um, in that sense, then, uh, coming back to this notion of what happens next, um, in January, hopefully, January or February, obviously everyone's busy in January, so we'll see what happens. Um, but in the new year, we'll be reaching out to a couple of um, archaeologists. Um, can we name them at this stage, do you think? Or... I, don't, I don't think we should, because we, no. we, we're not... Um, no, we, we don't yet know entirely how we're going to be handling this. What we can say, I think, is that in, in, in the same way that this is a story that is not going to go away, um, our coverage is going to... Our, our coverage and conversations are going to develop over the next few weeks and months, yeah. Excellent. Great way of putting it. Um, yes, so we <laughs> will be doing that. And, and also, in that sense, also I, I invite... Use use loss at home uh, to continue to to make sure that this doesn't lose momentum, doesn't lose its yeah. steam, um, and that's not to say that every conversation has to be about this. Not every conversation has to be an argument, even because um, hopefully, actually, most people can have a consensus on the fact that people deserve to be safe in the in, in their workplace. God yeah. forbid. Um, but rather that 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 this this is important and it, and it deserves to yeah. be treated treated as such. Okay. Well, I, I'd go so far to say as getting this right is just about the most important thing that's facing the heritage and archaeological community in Britain at the moment. 